What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And God damn it, it feels good to be here. I forgot Joined to play by- the theme song, Beastly. Huh? You forgot the song? I forgot the song. Ah, oh, Briar. I don't know what to say about you, okay? I'm going to blame it on Frame Ripper. There's nothing left Frame for you Ripper. Tonight. The Revolver Podcast, Mama <laughs> Hot Flash, crew is hot. Always doing you right. With a first take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds. Geeky, bump what you heard since birth on this earth. We know that the future belongs to the nerds. Let's Revolver go! <laughs> what it is, everybody? <laughs> That's my favorite part. Let's go! <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate it, even though it's the, the end of the song. But yeah, that is. It's yeah, meant it's to like, get people excited. Yeah, man, and it does. It totally does. I love that fucking song, man. It's I, like I'm going to revise that song, so you guys be be looking out for that probably within the next couple of weeks. A few changes have taken place. You're going you're to revise or you're going to b- 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 remix? Ooh! Oh. Uh, <laughs> we'll do it. Ch- 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 chopped and sc- screwed. Okay, but b- before we get started with introductions, Revolver Live would like to thank all the amazing men and women of the United States services that have fought sacrifice and pay the ultimate price for our freedom thank you all and god bless you from revolver live and of except course, for you tommy you fucked you? up tommy you fucked up <laughs> we're not going to get into tommy's story <laughs> prior it's yep. been over a week man it's been what it's been a week in, in a day yeah i mean almost a week and a half i mean it's tuesday yeah, we can no, two we days. Can it's, yeah, it's mm-hmm. horrible. We did take off, of of course, for the holiday weekend, but we had to reschedule because we all felt that waiting till next Sunday would be sacrilege because we know we yeah. can't go that long without being being in each other's company. That's so true. I want to know what you guys have been up to. How, how's your week been, Brian? Dude, it's been pretty good, man. I, it's been busy. I've been uh, you know doing the photo shoot thing all, again. It's, so that's been very busy. That's real busy. And then, you know, just regular stuff as well. Um, but I got to say, the weather has finally turned in Connecticut. So I feel like I got rained on two to three times a week every week for the last like three months. This week, it's been beautiful. I can't keep myself inside. Like, I just want to keep going outside, right? It's just like, it's beautiful. It's high 80s, nice and dry, no humidity. Oh, man, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. You know, like, you know, at the end of the winter, you almost feel like you're like a solar fuel cell or a solar battery that just needs to, like, recharge in the sun, you know? Oh, yep. man, I want to I want to do the Dark Souls thing and just praise the sun all day long. I haven't played that game, but, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But living down in the south, it's been that way for a fucking while. You know, everyone's I got a, I got a dream, a Beastly, nerd. of someday I'm going to convince my wife of this. She's not on board yet, but I'm going to convince my wife that I want to move my office into the garage. I want to clear out the garage and move like my studio office into the garage and use the whole garage as a studio, right? And on really nice days, you just open that fucking garage door right up. Just have that. It'd be like an open air office. I can tell you exactly how you can do it, and I can guarantee you it'll work. Uh huh. Because I'm, I'm I know that you know. The home be safe. She is, listens to the be, show, so be careful. This could be <laughs> this could be a very contentious environment. You know, women are the homemakers. They like things to be laid out specifically the way that they want them, especially in the house. Usually, for the man, the garage is kind of the man cave, man type area. So we did a show a few months ago about talking to your wife, and what would you say to convince her? to bring another woman into the the, the relationship. Yes, I can confirm that we did not come up with a valid argument. Absolutely, we didn't. We didn't. We failed on that challenge. But that should be your opener. Talk to Miss Rabbit and say, hey, look, I love you, and I want you to know that I'm a person who's filled with tons and tons of love. All right. So you're saying, Beastly... Start, and she tell she start by asking for a three-way, and when she says no, we'll then say, "Well, how about the garage then?" Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna say, "I love you. I, I need the garage," but all she's gonna hear is, "I love you. You can't park your car in here no more." <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great analogy there, Wilson. <laughs> That's all she's going to hear. And she's going to be like, Parking okay. Here, Mr. Rabbit. She's going to be like, you have about five more seconds to humor me before I walk the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it works. Though. Yeah, that adds up. So much love. Then say, well, at least give me enough room for my love. How about the garage? Let me just sit in there and permeate with love in the garage. Let me move some of that shit out of there and sit there and fill it with love. Mm-hmm. And she might say, well, it sounds better than another woman. Take the fucking garage. You know, I did a, I did a video this week of kind of, I just wanted to kind of shoot like the new computer. I built a new computer for Frame Ripper. 
And I just wanted to kind of go through it and kind of show everybody like what was up with it. And uh, to do that, I had to like basically rearrange the entire office, right? It's not just like moving a camera, moving some lights. It's like to move the light, you got to move the desk, you got to move this, you got to move that, you know, because everything's like, it's like puzzle pieces in here to make everything fit. And then if you move anything, so I mean, I really want that garage. So much more room for activities. It'll be great. <sighs> I, you know what? I actually do know what you mean because I'm in my office, which used to be a garage. Oh, you're living and the you, dream. <laughs> my life, man. It's great. I'm telling you, it's amazing. So I, I hope that works out for you. I'm just really, really happy to see you guys. I really missed you guys. Uh, so, and hopefully, Brian, the next couple of weeks, you're able to take a break. You know, we talked pretty sure. I know it's been tough on you. But I got another lucky, man, been- man. I got, I got, I got the man cave and I got dibs on the garage. Sam gets the living room, which I call the bay. Doubled layer. down. What? What's that? You pulled the double. You got the daily double. I got the daily double. I got a man cave <laughs> and then like some like timeshare man cave out there, <laughs> and then Sam's got the babe layer, which is I've dubbed it in the living uh-huh. room. So Ooh. she's she's so, chilling so what, the babe what, layer. What does the babe layer have in it? I'm, yeah, I'm trying yeah. To- um, it's got, she's got, um, the same TV as I do. She's got a big ass TV. She's got a nice computer. She's got a PlayStation. She's got a couch and half of the other living room that she doesn't even use because all that stuff's in it's one like, spot. So, so you're the smartest guy on this podcast because you gave yes. your girl a living room and called it a babe layer. I'm doing that as soon as it shows over. I want to go out there when Kate's cooking there and say, Ooh, the babe kitchen is looking awesome. She's going to turn around and smile like a superhero. You've been doing it the right fucking way. I love it. I, it sounds like I did it the right way, but the way it really went down was I want you at the opposite end of the house. Get away from me is, the what, truth she emerges. Me, is what she said to me. The truth <laughs> emerges. Oh, man, I'm really happy to see you guys. For the people who knew the show, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part, a part of the show like so many people today. Got a special show lined up for you guys today. You can be part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video formats, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. With that, welcome to Revolver Live episode 42. Or That's a two. Bit older than me, but I love it. Or two. I can't believe I made it, man. I gotta, I gotta tell you about my weekend. Yeah, please, I want to hear about please, this, please, man. Please, please, please. Wilson right, was so at summer for camp. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I went to summer camp, and no, it's not <laughs> the summer camp you guys probably went to as kids. This is camp a Crystal Lake. Yes, this is a music <laughs> festival. <laughs> Music festival with anywhere of an average attendance anywhere between twenty to twenty five plus thousand very free souls there. Uh, lots of hippies, in other words. So they have eight different stages at this festival. Um, tons of tons of uh, vendors, other things, all these trinkets and stuff that you can get. All these different stages with all these different kinds of music, and as you could as you, as you could imagine, all walks of life. Yeah. I mean, there are your your old hippies, your old school. I mean, all ages, all all races, all everything, and it was a great time. So, some of the funny shit that you see at these festivals when you get that amount of people together is amazing. So, what my friend Shibby started doing. Was um, I mean, you can find people. There's people that are hard up for money. You know, they're out there partying. They're losing stuff. They're spending money on things. And uh, her mom gave her this big, I think it was a two-gallon jar of Grey Poupon mustard. <laughs> and she's like, give it. She's like, you know, everyone, give it to your friends. We don't need it. It'll go to waste. So she brought it out to the festival. And she was paying people like five bucks. Just she's like, let me dump some of this on you and film it. What? And she has all of these, <laughs> all of these different like uh, segments of video of her dumping this gray poupon. I'm talking a fucking jug, dude. This thing is huge. Just dumping it on people. And she had uh, what else did she have? She had a big five thing bucks? of like. Uh, she had like a gallon of like Tabasco sauce and then like this like cheddar cheese. So all these people were in front of our booth 
And she was making them lay down and just running down with them with uh, Grey Poupon mustard and stuff. And then we were we were instigating it a little bit. We're like, roll around, roll around in the dirt. And these people, (laughs) they started rolling around. So all the grass and stuff would be stuck on them. And we're like, now go in the vibe tent and start grinding on people. And you'd think that it was like Moses parting the Red Sea. When that person ran in there, you would see the crowd just split. All this motherfucker is covered in dirt and mustard. <laughs> yeah, man. Attack my fucking hot dog. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen so many naked people this weekend. Ooh, that's I've the great seen part. so many people run from the police. Sounds I've way seen, better than the summer camp I went to. <laughs> I've seen. I saw this guy get busted without a ticket, and the cops tackle him and get him on the back of the golf cart. And as he's on the back of the golf cart, this motherfucker goes, peace, and jumps <laughs> off. He just runs for it. The cops whip it around. They try to, they try to like, nudge him with the golf cart. They end up running into each other. This guy's gone. <laughs> All right. Was he cuffed? No, and they didn't have him apprehended at the time. Oh, and nice. 30 minutes later, this motherfucker comes walking back with... <laughs> this was his grandmaster disguise. All right? Yeah, he had on yeah. a white... A white tank top. When he came back, he had a black one on. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That'll fool him. 20 minutes later, same area. The cops are like, oh, hell no. And you could just see him. <laughs> like, they're all like, don't don't get him yet. We got to get around him. <laughs> they they pounce him. They get him. He must have been off again. The off the back of the golf cart. He got <laughs> away again. <laughs> this dude is my hero right now. All of this was in front of me. <laughs> in front of our booth and we don't know if they got him again for the second time but then uh there was another instance where a gentleman was running from the cops and this may be the smartest guy i've seen in my life as he was running he was removing articles of clothing so that if they wanted to tackle him they were gonna have to tackle tackle a naked naked dude dude. (laughs) and you could tell as they realized what were happening they were like uh, oh man! The, uh, oh, sort of slow down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude's getting he's, awfully naked. He's MIA. We don't know where he's at. You know what I mean? What like, are you talking about? It, he's right there. Can't see him. I, I don't see enough hippies. You know, um, growing up, I, I missed that whole era. Oh and man! It's like the era. The the thing I dream of is like the era of free love. I mean, not that I would take advantage of this era. I just think it was a very giving time in human history. Like, imagine, Briar, if you got, like, a key to go back in time yeah. and get a VIP ticket to, like, Studio 54. Uh-huh. That's one, that's one I don't time. know if that's hippies, though. That's more, like, cocaine and... Oh, oh that, that, like there disco. were definitely hippies in there. Disco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. A lot of hippies so, moved on to the there, disco movement. Yeah, you'll, you'll see a lot of people in there doing some very fun activities. You don't <laughs> so, have to partake. I was the, just saying. The big, the big oh, thing no. to do is um you get these big sticks at the festival because the crowd Uh is so big and if you get separated from your friend we call them rage totems because people are out there raging and they have it's almost like like a banner in like a a battle you know what i mean so you have a custom item that you put on top of this giant stick so Uh that your friends know exactly where you are and there's some really extravagant like very beautiful ones like all these different lights like making jellyfish like boxes with a light up face in a different color each time like you turn the box around like four different sides cool and then there's the funny ones like there was a group that had a trump one uh a kim jong-un one and a um a putin one and they were all together just raging in the crowd like they had them on these sticks and there were like ones with puppets and things and there was like like, uh, there was one that I saw. It took, it was like five different people had a pole, and like one was to like one arm, one was to the other arm, and it had legs. So it was almost like this big, giant, like puppet that like tons of people in the crowd were controlling. It was super insane. It was very funny. It sounded uh, like you had a good time. Uh, I don't know if many people know this, but you, you run your own business, and this was kind of a way for you to get some of your business out there and let people see your creative side and hopefully make some money. So uh, like I told you pre-show, uh, entrepreneurs are the, they get in my heart. And, and to know that I've got such a talented friend who's willing to brave the unknown, because it's really scary to be in that, not only are you creating, but then you got to cross over into the world of sales to make not- your product seem, seem valuable to people. And to me, that takes a lot of ingenuity. It takes a lot of courage. And I, I genuinely respect that. And, uh, you know, I hope you really made out like a fat cat. 
It means a lot, man. Yeah, sales were good. But yeah, you talk about it being scary. If you're not comfortable around people who like to get fucked up, it is very scary, dude. And I'm not talking like, oh, you had six beers fucked up either. Like, the, the, some very strange people. Like, but, and like, the hardest thing is that, like, you have, when you're running the booth, you have all these different people running up. And they can all be having a different experience and be putting off a completely different vibe. And it is ex- it is exhausting. Like, you know what I mean? To be you a chameleon, you have to be a chameleon it's, in that situation. It's all these different vibes and energies coming up. Like, it sounds really hippy-dippy, but, like, it's true. You know, like, these people put each individual that comes up puts off, like, a different vibe. You know what I mean? And uh-huh. it's very hard to get uh, in tune with. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm fucking glad it's over because it was a heat index of 100. Briar's talking about good weather. <laughs> 101 and like 80 percent humidity here Shit. Like, yeah out at a festival Damn. and you talk about how your, many hours a day were you up there you were uh at least 14 Ooh, like eight wow. in the morning till usually at least like one two in the morning ish something like that like usually around there so like at least 14 that's but, what winners do though willie yeah sweet dick willie out there braving oh. those customers very, so very I'm glad sorry. it's over. I'm glad to be here. I'm Has anybody called you Sweet Dick Willie in the wild yet? Other than Sam, no, not yet. No, <laughs> yeah, that that's count the in the one wild. That matters the most. It she will happen, Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna be walking down the street someday, and you're gonna hear, "Yo, it's Sweet Dick Willie." <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna dab on him. Okay. He's gonna dab on him. Let him know. Like, uh, but yeah, man, it, it's, uh, I'm glad to be home, ready to get back to normal life and air conditioning. Oh man. Ooh, thank God for air conditioning. I paid yeah. someone to mow my lawn today. So pour it got one so out for air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got, I had to pay someone to mow my lawn today because it just got so out of control from me being at the festival that I needed a professional to take care of it. I had to call in the A team. I'm calling the pros. I had to call in the A team to come out and mow the lawn. No longer what? an amateur project. <laughs> what has affected us all recently? Today, when I went into my office, the work that I normally do in the lab, our customers weren't providing any work. Uh, they're having kind of a slump. So there was nothing for me to run through my, my microscopes and make mounts of and check. And so I walked out on the floor like, you know, a baby new to the world. I didn't know what I was supposed to do for eight hours. So I walked over to uh, the plant manager and said, now, there's no board warner, there's no IMS. He said, Well, how about you check those parts over there? That's exactly how he sounds. Uh, shout out to Tim. And so I walked over and checked those parts. It took all day long in, in the scathing heat. And I remember what it was like before I, I, I was promoted to the laboratory. It's hot as a motherfucker down here in Atlanta. It's hot yeah. as a motherfucker. You got to yeah. take a few letters out of motherfucker because it's, it's that damn hot. It's <laughs> saucy. Yeah. It's just too exhausting <laughs> to say the whole word. It's just you just gotta, you gotta shorten it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so look, this episode of Revolver Live is gonna be super duper fun. And the reason it's gonna be fun is because of you guys, you guys who are making it so Me? so fun. Not you, Briar. You can't take all the oh. credit. Today's episode is gonna be a revolver to- a revolver viewers topic <laughs> episode. Give you so, all a buffalo wave, beastly. How are you like that? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Buffalo, fucking way. Buffalo don't want none of this shit. Well, they, Buffalo saw me picking up them heavy ass parts today. I bet you he was thinking, damn, that motherfucker picked that shit up. No wonder I was asleep. But um, today's episode is going to be all about you guys. You guys have submitted us some, some great topics. We're going to run the gamut of these topics. And, and just in case you'd like to include topics for a further episode of like, this type where we read our viewer topics, submit that to revolvergamescast at gmail.com. But this is going to be a lot of fun. We kind of reviewed these, uh, went over the ones that oh, we had. A little had bit of fun, anyway. Yeah, a little bit of it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> and, and Mr. Wilson, would you like to get us uh, started with some of these great topics? Before we Absolutely. do that, we got to thank our sponsor, On Air PC. Ooh. Thank you to On Air PC for sending me this. <laughs> so this week uh, I actually built a brand new Threadripper based computer mm. This thing is an absolute monster It's a streaming PC uh, This is the kind of thing that On Air PC Can totally help you with Is He has the expertise, Ryan over at On Air PC Has the expertise to help you If you're a budding streamer If you just want to you know, Dip your toes into streaming Maybe you want to stream and play video games on the same PC Maybe you just want a dedicated Streaming PC and you want a Threadripper, 
Uh, Maybe you want to call it bro. Frame Ripper because, but you can't because I already named my computer Frame Ripper, and that'd be unoriginal, you bastards. <laughs> On AirPC, can help you out with that, except for the naming part. <laughs> so we want, <laughs> we want, <Bastards>. thank, <laughs> we want to thank On Air PC, uh, and uh, <laughs> if you'd like to. Give them a call. Their phone number is 330-850-1525. That's 330-850-1525. We should make that a jingle so we can remember it. Ooh, you know, that's, how, that's why they always I'm not, make them. I'm not writing the song. Beastly, like, come on. I mean, that's, I, I can come we each got our own jingle. talents, and that's your talent. You got to 330-850-1525. You're going to me into this just because it's my town? You want me to start singing about Buckeyes, too? They don't even taste that fucking good, okay? The best things that come out of Ohio, Ohio are, well, the Cavs are from Ohio, too, so, yeah, the Cav Cavaliers. I'll tell you the, the best potatoes? thing to come out of oh, Ohio. Idaho. Frame Ripper. <laughs> frame <laughs> the best thing to come out of. <laughs> that was the best ad read ever. In case you want, I don't know, Red Ripper. <laughs> Thank you to On Air PC. Give them a call if you're looking to build a new PC, uh, and they'll be sure to help you out. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually doing a little side project with On Air PC, too, so I'm super excited about them as well. All right, so, Mr. Wilson, would you like to do the first topic? Can. First topic comes to us from Luis Ramos. The question is, who creates better video games, American, Asian, or Europe developers? Uh, so, Luis mm. says... I, <laughs> I thought about this question while I was on I the can, can and forgot my phone in my room. True tragedy. Damn. Started thinking about all the games I have played and noticed I have about 50 games coming from North America and Asian developers. However, the games I enjoyed mostly come from Asian developers. So how do you guys feel about this? Like, and it's it's kind of easy to break it down. So obviously for like Asian developers, you got things like Nier Automata, uh, Metal Gear Solid, Mario, oh, fantasy, Pokemon. Exactly. And then over here in the West, you know, we've obviously got uh, Rockstar, Bungie, Treyarch, all those kind of studios and stuff. Um, and Europe isn't Epic Games Europe based? The creators of Fortnite, I thought. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck Europe. <laughs> so uh, I, for, I'm not going to lie. Like the I'm whole the whole continent? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I can't. That Atlanta but, and he learns. Yeah. He learns his that reputation. Mm. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> My wife happens to have roots there. But um, for me, this is kind of a, a trifecta of a question. It's really hard to answer because there have been times that we've all enjoyed games from these different places. We've all enjoyed RPGs. We've all played JRPGs. I would think, uh, and, and kind of Japanese centric experiences that have been hella fun. You know, if we think about it, Mario is a Japanese game. You know, and that really is, you know, the, the foundation of what we all play as single uh, as side scrollers, and it was the foundation of open world 3D platformers. So it's like if you think about it that way, it's a real conundrum to answer. But then when you think about more uh, North American developers and and kind of the 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 Western RPG and, and the fallouts and things of that nature, it, it opens up a whole new door. I don't know if I could say which one I prefer. If you had to get rid of one, maybe that'd be an easier question. But for me, it all depends on what time of day, how I'm feeling. And, and I'm just super, I, I, I'll just be honest, I'm appreciative of them all. I play less Japanese games now than I used to, but, but they still, for me, are a very important part of that soup that makes gaming magical. I like that, BC. At the end of this question, let's go back to which one we'd get rid of. I like <laughs> After it we too. answer the actual question, <laughs> let's ask. Let's answer our own question. <laughs> okay. So um, for me, growing up, it was it was very much. I was all about the Japanese games, man, because you know we grew up on Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Sega things like that. I mean, like I had Sega, dude, but I was I was a Ninten Nintendo bro. We're talking. Mm -hmm. we're, into, we're talking about the, the the console wars. We're talking about the place and Sega's I Japanese know. as well. I know. That's what I'm saying. I know there's a lot of still American developers on the NES console and stuff like that. But ultimately, the system came from Japan. So that's kind of like what I grew up on was your Mario's, your Zelda's, okay. your Pokemon's. All well, Pokemon Red and Blue came out when I was relatively young. But as I got older, it's really swayed towards. European and American game developers. Like, it's no secret. I love Bungie. I played a shitload of Call of Duties. Yeah. Um, 
Battlefield, you know, Ubisoft, any, a lot of stuff that Ubisoft's put out from, you know, and I just, it, it's really tough. I, I would say I'm primary, primarily an American dev gamer these days because the only damn game that I can seem to play is Destiny 2. So, but it was very much the opposite <laughs> growing up, man. Like, dude, I loved me all the Mario games. Like, anytime a new Mario game came out, I had to have it, you know? Like, it's, but Ubisoft's been killing it lately, man. Like, with, uh, you know, the division on PC, like, I'm actually pretty excited to see what comes with the second one because of how much they've turned around with the first one. Mm, I am yeah. legitimately interested in seeing what they do. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's tough. You know, like you said, it's a really hard one. To, it when you name easier. when you name the titles, it's really it's hard to, to go against the North American developers. You know, like uh, Inner Black Ninja said, uh, God of War, America, America made God of War. He said, just saying. He said, don't forget Red Dead Redemption. Uh, yeah, yeah, Red Call of Duty. GTA. I mean, I played tons. Yeah, I played tons of these games, and it's really hard to, to vote against what kind of has been built here in America in the last. But guys, years. you guys are missing one very important fact: is that the best game of all time came from Poland. What okay. game? You're talking about The Witcher. What do you mean, which game? The fuck kind of question is that, Wilson? <laughs> well, okay, what, what game is that, Briar? <laughs> the Witcher Three, the best game of it, all time. Was, it, 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 it is a great trilogy. It is a great game. Uh, it, it's. I'm so happy I can speak on this now. The Witcher is one of the. I'm still playing it. The one thing the about games. European games, specifically to me, Eastern European games, is they have something that is. It's hard to pinpoint, but there's like a. There's an indie vibe about it, and there's there's this like rough vibe about it, but it's also really super creative, and it's. What it feels like, American developers feel like they're they're always going for like the blockbuster and like the the wide appeal, and they do it fantastic. Like some great games, God of War is fantastic, Destiny is fantastic. Like you know, Call of Duty, you know, like all these great games come out of America, just fantastic stuff, and a lot of great indie stuff too. But the weirdness that comes out of Europe, like I don't know, it's just very appealing to me, and it, it's. You know, I don't. I don't spend but, all day right. every day playing. You know, The Witcher Three. I don't, or you know, other games along those types. But I, I don't know. There's something very appealing that comes out of Europe for me, like a little off tempo. I'm looking at some of these games, and you're right. A little Big Planet from Media Molecule. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Europe. Have you seen uh, their new game, Dream? Is it Dreams? Is that it's what it's called, called? Dreams? Yeah. I have seen that a little bit has of that. been getting been very yeah. good buzz from people who went to like the judges week at E3. Like people are in love with that game. If this is what they, I mean, look, they made uh, you know Little Big Planet, and that game you could Little Big Planet too. You could almost make anything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that, unfortunately, the taken, downfall with I, Little Big Planet right was the control. Like no matter what you made airy, in that game, yeah. yeah, no matter what you made in that game, you were stuck still with Sock Boy's control system. But what the difference is in Dreams, apparently, is that you can make any game you want and make it control any way you want. It's really supposed to be fantastic. It's like a tool set for you to really just go crazy with. We haven't had a chance to talk about this, and um, this is another European game, uh, but uh, Detroit Become Human. Game of the Year contender easily. I beat that game. Uh, I beat it on Saturday. That's an unpopular uh, opinion. And, and I'm not kidding, man. <laughs> Uh, the game is fucking phenomenal. If you haven't played it, then you can't speak on this shit, Briar. You're I'm right. telling I you haven't now. played it. Yeah. I've just listened to you know professional reviewers pan it for the last week. Pan <laughs> it. Damn. They can, they can kiss Yo, the anaconda too. Didn't I'm Tetris come from Russia? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Heavenly Sword, Devil May Cry. And, and everyone knows Tetris. Games. My fucking grandma knows Tetris. Like my grandma had a yeah. Game Boy with Tetris in it. Europe. I mean, I Assassin's Everyone. Creed. All the Assassin's Creed. Yep. Kills them. Europe. So angry birds. I'll tell you, Japan would not be at my top, the top of my list, just because while they certainly would have been in the early, in the 80s and 90s, like, no doubt about it, nowadays, like, I don't know. Their way of storytelling has never really resonated with me. Uh, you know, that's why I don't watch a lot of a anime. That's why I don't really get down with uh, oh, man, that kind of thing. It's like their 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 form of storytelling just it it, it it just doesn't work for me. And 
Uh, a lot of the stuff that I see come out of Japan these days, it, I don't know. It's just it, it's it's not doing anything. I also don't like that like JRPG kind of flavor. You know, I never really have. Whew. Can't agree with you on that. Love the anime boobies though. Love yeah. it. Look, <laughs> Japanese games yeah. have a, a very important place. You know, uh, the fucking's Final, good. Final Fantasy <laughs> series, Nier Automata, uh, what's that one? Uh, Persona. You know, mm. the, these these games are very important to the gaming community and the gaming ethos in general. Uh, it, it might not be as popular, but I'm a huge anime fan. I love anime. To me, it's yeah, just a lot of people do, if not more important than traditional film. I love anime. But that's so all right think, because people are allowed to have different opinions, and that's why there's these wide varieties of different types of games, different kinds of entertainment, right? Is that, you know, some people are going to like stuff that comes out of the West, some people are going to like stuff that comes out of the East. Some people like Detroit Become Human, goddammit. Mm, only fake only ass very few, apparently. To. <laughs> Shit. The game is sick, though. You guys check that game out. It's really, really cool. So, all right, so, all right, so now, get rid of. Yeah, who are we getting rid of? For me, it's easy. Get- it's Japan. I'm getting rid of Japan. Can't do it. That's getting rid of Mario. It's getting rid of Sonic. It's getting rid of. Oh no! Nintendo doesn't make games for me Fantasy. anymore. The last I, I really like Legend of Zelda. The last Legend of Zelda. I can't remember the last hmm. Japanese game I loved before that. Oh man, I can't get rid of it. I don't play Assassin's Creed. You know, has Antarctica get... put out a video game lately? <laughs> mm. No, we're safe there. Else. Anything good out of Australia recently? <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Wilson? Um, hmm. I mean, if you had to pick one. I'm looking because I'm looking at some of these Japanese video games. Pac-Man, Briar, there'd be no Pac-Man. There'd be no Resident Evil. I'm not I'm no- not deleting their entire catalog. I'm saying, like, f- from here on out. We can't get Ooh. rid of Japan for... Like, there wouldn't be a modern video game industry if it weren't for Japan. So you can't delete Japan for, like, you know, from past <laughs> history. There's Like, the gaming okay, so- industry doesn't exist as it does. Europe, Japan. Europe is out for me. Europe is out? Yeah. There's no way I, I choose Europe I'm trying, trying to think of what game New Zealand put out recently. <laughs> New Zealand. Oh, man. There's just I, so many good ones I guess Japan. since I can't think of anything off the top of my head, I'm going to have to go with Europe, and it pains me. I'd hate to – oh, that is a tough question. That's like, which kid do you love the most? It's okay. Mm. <laughs> it ain't time. I have five. Never <laughs> Right. You can you can always right. say which one you love the most. Just change it. Fuck it up, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I guess I'd have to go with Europe. So we can kinda we can kinda also piggyback off this question because our, oh, our so next, revolver decides. Europe's so our next uh topic kind of goes in with this, and that is from DMI sixty eight or yeah, or DMI sixty eight uh question. Which dev do you trust the most? He Which says, dev? Uh, Demi says, I finally had time this week to finish Jason Schreer's book, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. A great oh my read. God. That's yeah, a phenomenal gave, book. Gave me a newfound appreciation for the hardships uh, development teams face when creating the games we know and love. It made me think, I wonder who the Revolver crew trusts most. Which developers are your shining beacon, beacon during this shit storm in the gaming CD industry. Project, man. This is an easy question for me. It's CD Projekt. Like, mm. no doubt about it. Like, I cannot wait for Cyberpunk to come out. Like, they, they're they completely anti-loot boxes. They're anti-microtransactions. They're, they're just into putting out the best game that they can put out. And then they support the shit out of the game that they just put out. Wow. You know? Did you say uh, Naughty Dog? Way to go, Briar. Me too. <laughs> No, I didn't say Naughty Dog. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'm positive. To... <laughs> you make a good point. What a scumbag you are. You, you make a good point, Pryor, and I don't want to piggyback off your answer, although I do agree and feel that that is the best answer, but Rockstar, I feel, Rockstar's, would be a close yeah. second. They do have microtransactions, and... I don't really think any have been like too game breaking in a sense. Like maybe in a GTA online kind of atmosphere, if you got like armored cars and stuff like that, using the shark cards to get in game currency, but it doesn't really bother me that much. Like, and I was also going to say F- Fantios and chat already said it, Bethesda. I-, I really 
really like what Bethesda does and the way point. that they conduct Ooh, yeah. their business. So. Bethesda has been really on a tear recently. Uh, I don't know, reason- man. Like, oh, I'm, I mix it up. I always mix up Bethesda with Bioware. Mm. Mm. The, re- the reason that mm. I-, I can't agree with Briar on this, I do think CD Projekt Red's a great developer, but they did make the greatest game of all time, after all. They made one of the greatest. Um, is it a lightning yeah, in the bottle situation? <laughs> is, it, is it a lightning in the bottle situation? I mean, the pedigree they have. I never played The Witcher 1 and 2. I have them on PC, but I never really got into it. I, I loaded up The Witcher 1. It looked like crap. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. Is it a good game? Probably so. I'm not going to argue that point. But we have other developers who have a long, longer-lasting pedigree of games. Rockstar, for example, has been knocking out AAA awesome games for shit the last two decades Rock, rockstar is on my shit list right now because they basically abandoned like single player dlc for gta 5 right and just completely settled into we're just going to keep creating like uh well, it's, paid it's dlc a, or paid paid transactions for, the for their mo- online so now i'm wondering like what's their next game going to be it's going to be red dead redemption is that just going to be filled with paid paid microtransactions in there online well it's still their first time ever doing something like this. That is, and it is a business model too. So I mean, yeah, if I, I go outside and I kill somebody for the first time, I'm still a fucking murderer. Just don't do it, Briar. Don't let the tendencies <laughs> take over. Don't judge for, me. For, point. for me, for, <laughs> for, for, for me, the answer is Naughty Dog because Naughty Dog has a proven track record. They don't do microtransactions. Their games are well crafted. And you can tell they put their heart, soul, blood. Wait a minute! Did you just say they don't do microtransactions? Weren't they the guys that sold the most overpowered weapon, the bow, in uh, Last of Us multiplayer? Like it was a, it was literally a pay. It's not, it's not overpowered. Okay. I play against it all the time. Okay. Uh, and 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 I, and I win. It's a weapon, and and everybody has access to it. If you want to buy it for a buck, you can. But um, as far as the microtransaction shit that's going on as far as uh you know the mainstream media and what we're all talking about in the gaming world they don't do microtransactions like that uh and no they, they just do pay to win uh, no it's not pay to win uh, <laughs> because if it was pay to win everybody would have that fucking bow and nobody does right you need to log in it's been like <laughs> four years since you logged in log in and see the damn game shit. no that's not and, happening that game's yeah. filled with bitch bombs <laughs> bitch bombs <laughs> only when i'm playing against you motherfucker. And, anyway but uh, for me, yeah, Rockstar. Uncharted Four has microtransactions too. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I I didn't know that, and I don't give a fuck. The game is fucking amazing. It's just incredible, and I, I think that we're moving in a place in gaming where microtransactions are just an unseen for, uh, conclusion. We're we're going to have this in the future. No, I don't think it's going to slow down. I think they might change the recipe and the way that these things are presented to the consumer, but it's a way for developers to make a little money on the back end. The cost of games has, has gone up insurmountably compared to what it was 20 years ago. And if they make, you know, uh, cosmetic items that people like or, or bow and arrows that shoot, you know, arrow tips that make you bleed, and it's a way for them to make money, I think it's a business model. But my answer is definitely Rockstar. I mean, not Rockstar. Naughty Dog. Rockstar is good, though. Interesting. Good answers. Good answers. I dig it. All right. Chris Melvin asks, is D2... The worst sequel of all time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the argument, is Destiny 2 the worst sequel of all time? I cannot think of a game that took everything from great from the first game and ruined each and every one of those things. <laughs> Take the nine months I put modifiers back on strikes while Fortnite goes from 30 to 60 in an hour. I'm a huge Destiny fan and play Destiny 1 a lot, but 2 is easily the worst sequel ever. <clears throat> so, I mean... Oh, it, wait. Oh, hold on. It says, uh, thanks for the email address, Gary, you stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Love Chris Melvin already. Love it. Go ahead, Briar. It's um, good to see Gary still in our hearts. <laughs> you know, uh, like, I think part of this conversation, we're going to have to look for a sequel that's worse than, you know, like, that's part of the conversation. But when you look at how far Destiny came, Destiny 1 came. And then how many of those features were not there for Destiny 2? Like, it is, I mean, Destiny 2 is a good game, right? It doesn't speak to, <laughs> it doesn't speak to, like, the hardcore players that were playing Destiny 1 for three years, though. And, like, a lot of features that they're just getting around to adding in now, nine months later, after release, like, 
It's a compelling argument. I like. I'm trying to think what what's been a really bad sequel for another game. Dragon oh, Age Two. Okay, so Dragon a Age lot of, Two is a good one. Dragon uh, Age Dramata. Two. A lot of people hated. Ooh, so. Yes. Oh God. A lot of people hated Super Mario Brothers Two. A lot of people hated Castlevania Two. Oh, Are you gonna hate on Super Mario Brothers Two? That game is amazing. Yes, it uh, is. A lot so of people, is, yes, they did, Beastly. Have you heard of the angry video game nerd? That was the, the video that skyrocketed him into into. Listen, if that's YouTube his name, fame. he's an angry motherfucker all the time. Hey, okay? listen, I get it. Beastly because, brings up a good point here. <laughs> listen, I get it, Beastly. Castlevania 2 is my favorite Simon's Castlevania Quest. of all time. Mario 2 is my favorite of all time. You know what the fuck I'm realizing right now? He's right. I just hate bad sequels. They're like my favorite games ever. <laughs> You just blew my mind, Chris Melvin. I think I just figured it out. I think my thing is shitty sequels. <laughs> That's just your thing. Destiny 2. Yeah. <laughs> Fallout 4. I know this might not be a popular opinion, but Fallout 4 was very disappointing to me. It was just Fallout 3. I don't know if that I would consider I don't even think it was as good as Fallout 3, to be honest with you. <laughs> I would agree with Evil here. Uh, most of the Mass Effect sequels were pretty bad. No, Ooh. just the third one. Ba mm. Battlefront 2 is a good one. But is that oh. a bad game, or was it just ruined by microtransactions? Like, they're... I never what actually about, played it. What about Battlefield 4? Battlefield 4? That was bad? That was I mean, that was really fucking broken bad. when it released, yeah, really. A, Will, Will has a good point. Call of Duty has a new shitty sequel to hate on every year. <laughs> <laughs> How, okay, this, this should win this oh, argument boy. easily, I think. Okay? Duke <laughs> Nuke them forever. Mm. Took them ten years to, to push that turn out. Took so I mean, forever? that's like yeah, it's like diarrhea from hell. Uh, I hated Resident Evil Six. That's the game that made me really, really hate Resident Evil until Resident Evil Seven came out and kind of reversed it. But Resident Evil Six was fucking atrocious. I, I absolutely hated that game. Borderlands the prequel was pretty bad. Didn't play it. Really, it was. Yeah, you're not missing out. It was pretty bad. Damn. I, 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 I'm gonna I, I go with no. There. I, I still have fun with Destiny, uh, but maybe I just have super low I expectations. I don't and, know. And if I'm it's easily still... impressed, maybe. Yeah. But like, whenever I play Destiny, whenever I get out there and I, you know, I, I go do anything in the game, uh, Kate and I have a fucking blast playing that game. So it's definitely not the worst to me. I could think of many games that piss me off, not including Simon's uh, Simon's Quest Castlevania Two. That's amazing. There's some good ones in. In chat, Dark Souls three. I'm surprised to see. Or Dark Souls Ooh, two. No, he says, no, that's sorry. great. This is Dark Souls two. He, uh, Resident Evil six. Yep, Resident Evil six. Uh, that sucked. Fallout four is better than three. Ash, you're crazy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Middle Earth Colin Shadow of War. That's another good one. I gotta. Oh, I, I don't know though, Wilson. I think I. I think I gotta hand it. Like if, if I were to hand out the title of the worst sequel. I think I gotta give it to Battlefield Four. Battlefield 4 that was some game shit. was broken, broken, broken. It mm. would crash constantly. Like Destiny didn't crash, right? It, it shipped oh. functional. You could play it. <laughs> you know what I mean? The mighty yeah. turnip. The mighty turnip. I was on your side because the mighty turnip did say that uh, Fallout Four was much better. It was brilliant after they patched it, but then he turned around and fucked up and said. He hates Resident Evil 6 and 7, uh, and they're both equally as bad. No, no, you didn't go there. Resident Evil 7 is the shiznit. Which one is 7? Is that the newest one? Yeah, the VR. Oh, yeah, yeah. The new one's great. What, what That's some you, crazy, crazy. You, 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 you need that, to get like, off Wilson's party bus. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. you play Resident Evil 7 again? You've clammed it too long. <laughs> yeah. What was the Assassin's Creed where people were like the smush Unity. and falling through the pool? <laughs> Unity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't know if Destiny 2 is the worst sequel of all time. It's but not even it up might, there. If we're, if we're talking D2 vanilla, it might be an honorable mention in the category of worst sequels of all time. But I feel like it's in a much better place now. Now, I don't know when this question was submitted. This might have been months ago. This might have been. <laughs> yeah, Chris, we don't, I don't even check know if you're email. still fucking listening. But <laughs> I did. Chris, Chris was playing Oregon Trail and died of dysentery two months ago. <laughs> 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 Pour one out for Chris. Press F in chat for Chris. <laughs> Fs all day. So, oh, so 
<laughs> Beasley, Next. what do you what do you what was your worst sequel of all time? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with. Mm, I really hated Dragon Age too. Uh, I was a huge fan of Dragon Age, like everyone who ever played it, and two just stepped into a completely different world, different arena, changed everything, and, and it just broke my heart. Resident it's Evil so 6 weird with that game, Beastly, because Dragon Age 1, you're right, it was a fantastic game, and they've never gone back to that formula. Like, why don't they just go back to that formula? It's so good. Everybody it's wants al- it. It's always someone Origins who thinks that they do the, the, the creator. Uh, it's like to- the chick who's over the Star Wars films now. She's She's changing everything, and, and, and she says the Force is female, and she says people can't identify with Luke Skywalker, so she has to create this whole new mythos of all female protagonists. This is what's been going on. She's not a fan. She, she She's trying to outdo George Lucas in what made Star Wars great, and and changing it is not how you you know affect the fans. It's the same thing here. These people come into a project. They're working on a sequel. They see what the person did that made the game great, and they say, well... I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to try something else. It's not about the fans. It's about the story. It's about the world. And sometimes you, you take a step too far and you fuck everything up like they did in Star Wars. Yeah, I would definitely Dude, say the These movies are better than the prequels, though. And that was oh, George yes. Lucas making I that shit. <laughs> talk about, I'm glad you brought that up because my choice is without a doubt Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Oh, yeah, that's really bad. Worst- Sequel of Star Killer. All oh, the time. first game is so good. My yeah. God, the first game is so good. The first game was so good, and the uh, second game felt like it should have been a DLC. Yeah, a DLC for the first. Really? The way you use the force in that game, man. Oh, you felt like you're really doing it, Brad. That oh. was the first time, I think, since I was a little kid, that I felt ripped off from a video game. Thank God for me, I was modding and and, and burning Xbox 360 games at that time. Because I, I, I put that, yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> so I put that disc in the Xbox. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be some hype shit." I was like, "Wow, this is whack, man." They did this to Star Killer. His name was better than the fucking game. Oh, breaks my heart. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next topic, which is submitted by Chris. Won't use your last name. The question is, I'm sorry, no, Chris was <laughs> the D2 argument. This is D May. 68. The question is M-rated game tax. So I didn't know about this until I read this. Mm -hmm. A U.S. senator has proposed legislation which will see a 10% tax added to the cost of M-rated video games. The good news, funds generated from this tax will go to support youth mental health programs. The bad news, the senator believes these programs are necessary because violent video games are breeding school shooters. (laughs) I'm sorry. What do you guys think? Now, are there uh, any M-rated games? What's the last M-rated game that came out? Evil Within? Oh, yeah, that game made me want to murder my wife. The game had to be M. This is such bullshit. Okay, look. And, and, and of course, there are people who, who, who are legislators who write laws, and they, you want to help, but they're looking in the, in the wrong place. Mental health is a major issue out there in this world. And if, if they think that video games, people taking the role in Grand Theft Auto or taking over characters like Kratos or people with guns, Mad Max, and that's turning kids into shooters, that means they need to start taxing films. They need to already It's a scapegoat, right? Out. I mean, it's, it's a yes, scapegoat. Yes, it is. Deadpool wouldn't be allowed to be played, okay? Now, let me are- ask you this. This is a simple question, right? If, if it's violent video games that are causing school shootings, then why is it only happening here? Why isn't it happening happening in European countries who play the same fucking games? Great point, bro. But don't shoot up their schools. Absolutely it's not right. it's not the issue. I'm sorry. It's it's there is scientific. There have been scientific studies being run since the 90s when this people started started spouting this bullshit the first time. And every scientific stu- scientific study has backed up the fact that they are not related. They're not related. So, yeah, uh, well, that's why when you get these legislators who want to make laws and pass laws that really hurt innocent people and, 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 and tax innocent people on things that are unfounded, it's just completely ridiculous. There have been tons of studies, and, and I think that the answer is myriad. It's not one particular thing. Every household is not the same. My child is different from yours, and, and, and people deal with stress and anxiety in different ways. Uh, there's a, a huge study saying that the opioid crisis and, and uh, what is it, uh, the antidepressant epidemic has turned a lot of these people into, you know, these, it's kind of altered people's way of thinking. 
make people think less of life. So there's a whole myriad that, that these professionals need to be looking at instead of focusing on something that's been around since the beginning of time. You, I mean, I played RoboCop in the arcade. I didn't leave and go shoot people. There was blood in that game. You know, it's just insane. They don't know what to do, so they do, and they grab the very first thing they see that looks scary, and they're like, okay, this this has got to be part of the problem, and it's not. And, and when you focus on issues and you solve them in this way, you're leaving the real issues, the fundamental issues out there to fester. And, exactly, and to Beastly. You, so, they are scapegoating video games, and they refuse to deal with the real fucking issues and, because the real issues are too hard to deal with. They're too politically, they're too divisive. politically charged, right? Mm -hmm. So they... You know, if I hear one more fucking guy say we need to focus on mental health and then do nothing about mental health at all, yep. Yep. at all, absolutely, absolutely right. That's absolute one hundred percent. I, I one hundred percent agree with you. Like I There's feel like you know the whole thing. They're like trying to make good out of just a bullshit situation by saying, "Oh, that tax is going to go towards." mental health and stuff like that if you want to tax for mental health there's other places that you can do it but just like briar said actually do something about it don't try to cover up this you know <clears throat> crappy tax and say that it's going to go towards something good and that it's a good cause to get people to jump on board why don't you just do that anyway why don't you just set forth a certain amount of tax money to be put towards that stuff you know and like jimmy said in chat like i and Mortal Kombat. Remember when Mortal Kombat first came out? Like the big stir dude. I remember was on when the... Tipper Gore and um, Tipper Gore and uh, what's his nuts? The lady it's that right. almost was president. <laughs> that I can't. Clinton. Clinton. No, Clinton. no Clinton. Tipper Gore and Clinton were out there in the news. You know, talking about how bad video games were for our youth. And meanwhile, there were this, studies. Right? Yeah, there were studies being done that directly contradicted this. It's funny because this was a Democrat, Democratic issue in the 90s, and now it's flipped over to be a Republican issue. So it just depends on what they're trying to protect, I think. <laughs> you know, like, they, it, whatever. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. Yeah, it's fucked. I would not be cool with it. I'd rather see them, you know, just use tax money already towards that and not blame video games for it because like Briar said we've already been here and now we're full circle it's just the different side trying to point the finger this time around it's a, it's a whole new set of people trying to you know and name me a fucking hobby that does more good good for people than fucking gamers man fucking millions of dollars raised yearly in support of you know St. Jude's and Child's yep. Play and multiple charities across the world. Millions of dollars. Doctors Without Borders, all yep. kinds of different things. Cancer prevention, children's hospitals. I mean, you could go on Twitch right now and find charity events. 100%. As a matter of fact, Awesome Games Done Quick is coming up next month. And they raise over a million dollars twice a year. They raise like $3 million a year. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's really weird how gamers have gotten this stigma of wanting to be violent people. I grew up playing the most violent of video games. I had the blood code for Mortal Kombat when it first came a -B -A -C -A -B -B. out. ABACABB. Doom, Doom was my first first person shooter. You know what I mean? Like, and I never have the thought of hurting someone. Just it just doesn't compute with me. You know what I mean? I would defend myself if I had to. You know, if Buffalo gave me the the salute with the two middle fingers and put them up my my nose, I would have reacted the same way, Beastly. But I don't go looking for trouble like that. You got like, that right. It's a very it's a very it's a very touchy subject. But yeah, it's they're definitely looking in the wrong direction. To look, we all saw it in chat. We all saw what the problem was. Bevel Up said it right. He said it. It's the damn rap music. It's two live crew. They have been allowed <laughs> to. To corrupt our youth for too damn long. Two Life Crew must be stopped. I think they've been stopped for quite a few years, bro. Oh. <laughs> I think you need to change those MP3s, my friend. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Yeah, that's it's perfect. a it's a it's a rough subject because I, I over and over again I feel like it's just used as a scapegoat. You know, and it, it it's so blatantly false. Like anybody who takes a half a minute to to actually do any research on actual scientific study about it sees that it's 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 all bullshit. 
people don't care. You know what? And it's sad that we've become a society of reactionary people, and we have very uh, uh, we have very uh, real issues that require more than a short answer in our society. Things are complicated, and, and when you're in politics. Uh, sometimes you want to appear to be the guy or the, or the girl who has the quick answer to solve the problems of your constituents, your people. But sometimes it takes a thoughtful person to sit down and, and be analytical and, and look at these issues and talk to the specialists and talk to the people in the field who really know what's going on. So you can make a, make a, a decision that will actually help stop or, or, or prevent some of these, you know, kind of issues happening versus just, oh, wow, I just saw blood on that movie. We need, that's why, you know, this is the, the reason why. And, and I think until they decide to stop, slow down, take a look at, you know, the real situations happening and talk to people who really know the backgrounds of some of this stuff, we're going to be in the same boat. Great Agreed. topic. Yeah, Agreed. good topic. Great topic. Yeah, that was a good one. Although, I'll, uh, t- I'll, say, I'll say this. What if gamers all got together and said, yeah, fuck it. Give us a 10% pe- tax on our video games as long as you can promise to us that it'll actually go to mental health. I mean, gamers would be like, we'll take that hit. Yeah. Hey, I, I would. Yep. I definitely would because T- it, it sounds like you agree here, Briar. Mental health is a, it's a huge issue with all this stuff going on. I mean, everybody who's been out in the world committing these shootings and, and, and losing their minds and going into the workplace and shooting people, it always comes back to some form of mental health. It's not just a person who went to the SWAT meet and said, "Fuck, I didn't like those shoes," and and then they go into the you know to a movie theater or schools are shooting up kids. These are people with proven histories of mental mental health issues, and I think that it's about time we really do something about. Instead of everybody saying, "Do something," that could be anything. Do something meaningful. <laughs> and that's the move, beastly minute. Should we move on to the next one, guys? Yeah. Um, let's see it. No, let's talk about politics a little bit more. You want to want to get you want to get deep. You Let's get, get with deep. it. Let's get real deep. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, according to the stream, it got shut down for a few seconds. So the my authority. You know what? As soon as I saw that, I'm like, shit. I'm not recording it locally. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Next one comes from Brandon Tyler. Question: Most competitive game. Hey guys, big fan. Topic is: Ooh, What are I your most? Com- what are you most competitive at? For uh, Brandon, or for for uh, Brandon Tyler, his is Rainbow Six Siege and PUBG is where he likes to get the sweatiest. So, I, is the question: What are we best at, or what are we like? Just what, what gets it, our juices flowing? Yes. What makes you a sweaty tryhard, win or lose? This is easy for me. Yeah, this is easy for me too. It, it's does that have to be a video is game? The Last of Us, and mine is Destiny. Does it have uh, to be yes, a video most game? competitive game. Okay. Well, it says game. Does it say video game? Do both. All right. For <laughs> for game, I'm going to say it's golf. I have a buddy. We go out on the golf course and we bet lunch. It's not a you know it's not a big bet. It's ten dollars, right? We fight tooth and fucking nail <laughs> to not pay for that lunch, man. Shit. It is it is four and a half hours of absolute sweat fest out on that golf course, just stressing over every putt, worrying about the the breeze, throw grass up to see where that breeze is going. <laughs> we are hard coring it out there. We're not we're not very good at golf. We're just trying our fucking damnedest. So, so would you say the skill based matchmaking is really kicking in on this one? Like you're, yes, you're, it is. <laughs> the rubber banding is strong. Yeah, your MMR is of yeah. equal stature. We go hard, probably for for video game. I don't know, man. Like, I don't get super competitive about like Destiny. Like, every once in a while, I guess when we're like at, at the end of a card in Trials of Osiris, I'll start taking it pretty seriously. But I actually get worse when I start taking it seriously. Mm. Like, the more relaxed I am, like at the beginning of the card, I'll have more kills than at the end of the card when I start like tensing up and. Mm. Yeah, game seven stress, can get stress, a little Brian. tense, but like in D one, there was definitely some moments where I was like, I gotta go fucking flawless this weekend. I need the doctrine of passing. I need the jewel of Osiris. I need the messenger. Yeah. This and that. And you get up to game seven, and you know we win the first round. What do I always say, Briar? After we win the first round, moment of truth. First round sets the tone. Remember? <laughs> first round like, sets the tone. That's, that's right. First round sets the tone. Let's go, boys. Briar Let's knows go. I get sweaty as shit in D two. Yeah. He knows it. He knows I love it. Like I get going. That stuff gets me going. Um, 
if <laughs> lately me and uh, some of the old Tower Life guys, uh, Con Man and Great American Hero, uh, we've all been hopping on and playing golf with friends. And you guys, it's funny that you bring up golf, Briar, because I don't know what the fuck it is about <laughs> golf that makes you hate your friend when they do better on a fucking a hole than you do. It. <laughs> you think I was sweaty when we played? Dude, Great American Hero is the sweatiest golf with friends player I've ever seen in my life, dude. Uh, we okay. should put him in a room with uh, Pope Bear and, and uh, Holtzman then. Yeah, they're pretty good too. <laughs> they're sweaty. <laughs> sweaty. They're sweaty. Sweaty. They're sweaty. It's, yeah, man, it's something about, it's funny you bring that up because that's, when you said golf, it instantly made me think about that. There is something about the game of golf that is both relaxing and can be intense at the same time like you're not really doing much more than just hitting a ball on a green open field on a beautiful sunny day and the birds are chirping and like like you said there's something about it that's stressful yeah like, when when you were when you're saying no to beer because you're afraid that you're gonna get too drunk yeah that's you know fun. you know hey. you're in it you're <laughs> you want that lunch you want that lunch man you want that you free might, lunch they say there's nothing like the- a free there's no such thing as a free lunch but i can guarantee you there is. You just gotta win it. <laughs> Get that free L seven from Long John Silver's. You best believe. Like, <laughs> we're going deep. We're getting the double quarter pounder. <laughs> yes, yes. Make it a double, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, let me get, on that bitch. Yeah, let me get uh, three quarter pounders and supersize that because it's on the loser. <laughs> and, and imagine Briar's friend is sitting there across watching him eat this. Uh, yeah. I've been that guy though. I've been the guy paying too, for sure. Yeah. I never competed like that and for anything. Uh, I, I I come from a super competitive family, so you know I have six brothers, and so everything was you know my dick's bigger than yours. I was always right, but when it comes to video games. Uh, I come from the old school when fighting games were like the place to be. Marvel vs. Capcom in the arcade, Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal, like I could close my eyes and ask you any move for Mortal Kombat 2 or 3, and you get to ask me, and I can tell you right now how to do it. It's etched in my brain. It just it'll never ever go away. So Mortal Kombat, I'm super competitive in the old ones. The new ones, I'll beat my sons because they're scrubs and they don't really understand Mortal Kombat, but. Let's go back. We go back to Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. I am a god. So I'm really, really competitive in that. Tekken. Beastly. Uh, I love Tekken. Yeah. When I first met my sons, before they were my sons, right? When I was dating their mother, and I, they came over to my house for the first time. I had the PlayStation 3 set up with uh, uh, Street Fighter, was it 4 at the time? I think it was Street yeah. Fighter 4 at the time. And uh, they really wanted to play it. So I played them, and I won, and I stood up. And I said, yes! <laughs> what the fuck? They, they started crying. <laughs> oh, you... That's fucked up, dude. dude that's Sam... when your wife looked at you and said, this is the one. <laughs> dude, Sam had to check me at, fucking... at Six Flags one time. I was playing air hockey against this kid, and I was, I was backhanding and jumping across, and I was yeah. hitting the thing so hard it was flying off. And like Sam goes, hey here for a second i walked over and i'm like what's up and she's like she's like you realize you're playing a fucking eight-year-old right yeah and you're like 32 years old out here sweating in Sweat air hockey who ass. does that she literally came and said who does that and I, I brought the kids to play laser tag one time for their birthday and i was going hard up in that laser tag <laughs> you have to. yes you do you have to bro no fucking chances i don't care if your name's nova and here your name is enemy yeah <laughs> Shit. Right, I hear diving over shit and laser tag, but covering up the sensor and running out like yeah, you're going sideways like this. That's someone yeah. who gets swept with ten year olds. I'm rolling on the ground, I'm fucking <laughs> elbow you walking. If they're aiming at your back, you go like this, if they're aiming at your foot, you go like this. So you just, you know, play like a fucking idiot. I was I was but going game, fucking hard the game that up I'm in there. Probably the most competitive man is the last of us multiplayer. That community is so alive and vibrant after even after all these years. It's just it's insane. almost as big as uh, the PC um, Destiny community. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> Dude. You never have a issue looking for a game on, on The Last of Us Online. Destiny, yeah, your ass will. You'd be sitting there hoping your friends log on. On The Last of Us, the game starts immediately, cuz. Mm-hmm. Don't try Naughty Dog like that, sucker. <laughs> Shit. 
So Shit. I had another in real life competitive, like several years. Um, it was about, I'd say probably about seven years. I did paintball competitively and started from playing in the woods, went on to the tournament field where they have the inflatable structures that are different yeah. sizes. And one side of the field is exactly the same as the other. Um, we got really into that. Me and some of my boys, um, we ended up picking up some sponsors and holding tournaments locally with buy-ins and giving pretty big cash prize out, like cash payouts to, you know, the first three finishers or whatever, so that there was an incentive. Like, even if you got third place, you walked out of there with more money than what you paid into the tournament sort of thing. So tons of people showed up for those, and we'd use that, too. We went all over the country, man. I've played paintball in Huntington Beach. Got to meet Maurice Gibbs from the Bee Gees. Uh, let's see, Be Real from Cypress Hill. Uh, a bunch of guys that were in the tournament and stuff. So we got to play in Huntington Beach, um, down in Texas, Philly, South Carolina, Chicago. I mean, it was just all over the country. New Jersey, like everywhere. And uh, it was very cutthroat and competitive because if you didn't place as like, you know, in the finals on Sunday, everyone was trying to make it to Sunday. You know what I mean? And uh, if you didn't place your sponsor might drop you, you know what I mean? Ooh. And paintballs are, were roughly 80 bucks for 2000. I would shoot 2000 easily in one match. No problem. And you could potentially play <clears throat> 50 plus matches by the, by the time the weekend's over. Holy shit. shit. You should start selling drugs. A lot of people did there. Uh, but anyway, uh, hence bringing in the crowd, like Be Real and Everlast and all these guys and the guys from the Bee Gees. It, it was really cool, man, but it was cutthroat as shit and competitive. You know, it got to the point where, you know, people would leave one team and go to another. And like, it, it was uh, it was very competitive. I don't miss like, I do miss it, but like I don't because like like any hobby that you turn into something more than a hobby, like it consumes your life. Like you have time for paintball and work. That's yeah. it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not quite like video gaming. Uh, it was a lot of fun, man. Like I said, we got to meet some really cool people. We won a lot of tournaments and just had an absolute blast. We got to go all over the place. Uh, and <laughs> I felt bad because they would always stick the entire, it was either called the NPPL, National Professional Paintball League, or PSP, Paintball Sports Promotions, were the two different oh, leagues. Shout that out to Gary in. Diaz. Shout out to Gary Diaz, PSP. And uh, <laughs> they would always stick all of us in the same hotel. And I'll never forget in New Jersey that I got off on the wrong floor. And when the door opened, all I heard was, people were shooting paintballs in the hallway. That's and awesome. Like, as I open the door, there's people in masks and guns <laughs> Amazing. Running, down the, running down the hallway, shooting the shit out of each other. And I'm like, yep, ding, we're closing that door. And <laughs> going back down to the next floor. And it always got super wild, man. So that was my... The best my game of paintball I ever played was actually played indoors. It was a office building that they had converted over. Like, I, I guess it had been like, you know, sold so they they bought the office building and played paintball. There's still cubicles set up in there. Mm -hmm. There was like long hallways with offices that connected with like doors in between them. It was the most intense fucking paintball I've ever played. It was it is crazy. Man. I've got an old video I'll have to link you to after the show of our team, like a little montage that we put together. And uh like we used to go hard, man, like really hard. Like we would step up after a game and after diving around and crawling around i mean we'd just be scraped and bruised up because like you were only allowed so much padding because if a ball hits you and bounces you're still in yeah even if the ref sees it hit you and bounce you know what i mean you can't contest how do that you get, how do you how do you get knocked out i mean what, just get the... shot anywhere on your person or the gun you're holding anything that means your hopper that holds the paint the paintballs if you get shot and that gets hit you're out just anything you have these pods on your back that hold like about a hopper's worth of paint. So when your hopper runs out, you reach behind you, pull some Velcro, dump the pods in and chuck them. If that pod gets hit while you're refilling it, you're out. If the pod, you throw it on the ground and it gets hit and you go to pick it up again, you're out. Like they just can't mess with, it's just too much to contest, too many variables. So it's just a blanket. If you get hit anywhere, you're out. And it's it's usually I'll just stick with laser tag. You don't get hurt. It, it was a five v five. Oh That's yeah, not man. True. 
<laughs> there, there was not true, bro. It's fucking yeah, dark in there. You're running hard. Bro. <laughs> hey, bro, you can't see the walls, bro. Just doom. Yeah, he's a fucking last Glasses action. are all fogged oh. up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, real, real quick, I, I just wanted to quote someone, uh, and this is someone who I know, Briar, that you respect their gamer opinion because they've been gaming for a very long time, and this one person in particular knows what the hell he's talking about. But it's Inner Black Ninja. He said, I like The Last of Us's online multiplayer more than Destiny's. Mm. Just saying. We can continue now. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. Shut your asshole, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Yo, I, did, I wanted actually, because it didn't occur to me to think about uh, PvE and getting sweaty in PvE. Mm. But, I mean, talk about a recent experience. We just finally finished the Spire of Stars raid like a week ago. And I'll tell you what, when you are trying to get, you know, like done with your raid team and it's 12 hours in, the sweat is real in that, you know, you do not want to be the one who fucks up. And like you got five other people just like relying on you to get your shit together, you know, like that. How many times a, have you beat that? Once. Ooh, really? It's that hard? It's hard, dude. It's it's, it's hard, hard yeah. and we were under leveled for it. Had me and Briar taking the leveling process a little bit more seriously, just a dash. A little bit, my ass. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have been so bad, but like we, I mean, we we hit a wall. We did as best as we in order. For, we could have completed that raid uh, our first day in all the stars would have had to have aligned. So it was possible. It was just very unlikely that we were going to finish it the first day. So the second time around, we had a few people who couldn't make it. So, you know, DCP, you know, got the, with the poll that they have, no big deal. Uh, within we got a five couple seconds. of randos. Helped them out. Yeah, got, got a there. couple of randoms. Uh, <laughs> modern tryhard and Chevy. You may have heard of them. They're just part of the world's first team. No big deal. <laughs> and <laughs> Briar... <laughs> Briar and the rest of DCP pulled those guys in with about five sec in about five seconds to spill fill the spot. And uh they were a good sport. Like they kind of let us like do our call outs, even though they weren't <laughs> like the correct call outs. Uh when you go up there's a part what of the race. Not DC. correct. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. You're right. Okay, I apologize. They're totally correct. Uh there's a part of the raid, basically, where you get launched up into the air, and you have to look at these ships, and they have a symbol over their head. It's usually circle, square, or triangle. Well, we didn't even see shapes, because our mind, as apparently, hasn't evolved past a two-year-old to identify too many shapes here. So we started calling it, they had these little protrusions. There was one, which we called penis, because it just had a little protrusion coming <laughs> off of it. And then uh, there was another one that looked like the Xbox 360 power button. So we called it power. And then the other one had four protrusions, which we called quad or quad dick. Yeah. So it's, it was funny that Chevy and modern tryhard were totally cool enough to be like, uh, quad dick, quad dick. Uh, right side <laughs> like when they were doing the call outs, like Did you guys so we, finally see the triangle circle and square. No, we, no. <laughs> we started, um, we started with quad dick, but we shortened it to quad. Right. And then like I get shot up there and I'm like, quad dick power. And everyone's like, you called all three of them. I'm like, no, it's quad dick. It's there's four of them. There's quad dick. <laughs> you got like a 10 minute argument about quad dicks. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, Chevy and modern triad are probably just sitting there going, these guys. I can't believe they didn't guys. finish the first night. I'm really surprised. <laughs> You know, with these call outs, I'm surprised they didn't get worlds first. I'm <laughs> shocked. It was great. But you're absolutely right, dude. That was a super sweaty encounter, man. Remember, we thought we were getting a buff, and it turned out it was just something from the raid boots. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, that was a good was half hour a, wasted. <laughs> it, was just a, it was just a perk on somebody's boots. Like, that, was, that was fantastic. All right. So, next topic. Next one be... and last one that we have. Yeah, so and I think it's I... possibly one of the best questions that have been asked personally. So Denver Miller has a question: Has a video game? Have you ever destroyed a relationship because of video gaming? So, so I don't know if also, you guys need a minute. Is to there think any of... way you could make Briar's image larger, larger than everyone else's during the podcast? <laughs> also, fuck Gary. Thanks. Also, uh, fuck Gary. <laughs> Gary's getting a lot of love today. 
Uh, <laughs> have, have we ever destroyed a relationship? I've never destroyed a relationship over gaming. I've been very, very lucky uh, to have been partnered with a woman who loves gaming as much as me. She even loved Detroit Become Human, bro. Uh, but You're right. I this did. is better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually started a relationship based on a lie about video games. Uh, my son's mother, Miss Keita, when I met her, I was 18, she was 17, and she, you know, getting to know me, I had never dated. I'm, I'm like my kids. I didn't know what a vagina was. I thought it was just to pee with. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get next to this girl. I'm spitting game on the phone. That was back when those Nokia phones were out, the big, thick bitches. And uh, she asked me what I do, like, for fun. And I was like, girl, I'm playing this Dreamcast. You ever play Sonic Adventure? She's like, uh, yeah, I like Sonic. I was like, what? Okay. And so uh, she went and had her grandmother buy her a fucking Dreamcast. And so, like, two days later, she called me. She's like, oh, I didn't tell you. I got my Dreamcast from upstairs, and I brought it into my room. So I'm playing Crazy Taxi. I got this game called Seaman. I was like, why would you buy Seaman? She's like, I don't know. I just like all kinds of games. And I'm thinking, this chick is the truth. That's probably the last time she ever played a fucking video game. Uh, so we ended up being together for five years. And it got to the point where I'd have my brothers and my friends come over on the weekends. And we'd sit in the living room playing PlayStation 2 and playing Smash Brothers. And I'd look back and she'd be like the black version of the girl from The Grudge, staring in anger as we had a blast playing video games. So our relationship was founded on a fucking lie. So I don't know if we, I could say that I ended a relationship because of video games. It's possible. You might not have ever got into it, though, if she didn't fucking come up with that lie about the Dreamcast. I, I love like, you, sons. I think I've used, like, hobbies, like, as a way to break up with people. Right? It's <laughs> like... <laughs> like, you know, you know when a relationship isn't really working. Not- so you just start kind of drifting away. You still like sex, though, every once in a while. <laughs> so, you you know, whether it's you just kind of start focusing more on video games than, you know, watching movies with your with your SO or, or you know, going out with friends more. Maybe you're playing some golf. Maybe you're going out with your motorcycle. Maybe you're, you know, playing Call of Duty online. I, mean, I, I don't know if I've ever had a video game or a hobby ruin a relationship. But I've used them definitely as a way out of a relationship. How'd this go, Briar? Do you have an example? I mean, it, it's the same. It, look, here's the thing with me, right? Is if if I love you and if I care about you, I'll do anything I can for you. I will I will literally do whatever I can for you. But if I don't like you, I I just don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, there's not yeah. there's no hate coming no from chemistry. me. Chemistry, I got you. There's, there's no, I'm not going to spend all my time hating on you or worrying about like, you know, what can I do to get that beastly motherfucker? You know, it's literally going to be, you're just going to get like a brick wall. It's just going to get shut down. <laughs> like, it's just not going to be there anymore. Right. Cause I'm not going to spend my time on an old relationship. And that's how I am with, uh, like ex-girlfriends too. It's like, it's just when it's over, it's just over, <laughs> you know, it's just not, there's no. So you're the real ice man. I yeah, you. I mean, I suppose. It's cold yeah. as ice when it's time to be. I, hey, man, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, some people spend their entire lives, uh, you know, uh, being polite. I don't want to hurt this person's feelings, and they turn back and they're fifty. And they're like, fuck. I'm not trying to hurt I, anybody. I just, yeah. like, I don't I, have time. You know, like, it, it, it's the truth. You know, I got that's, time a sad, for that. that's a sad part of society, though, that people will go into a Starbucks. And if they get the latte wrong, they go back to the, the to the cashier and cuss her out and say, does this look like a fucking vanilla latte to you? And the lady will say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll get that for you. But they'll stay in a relationship with someone who's literally ruining their life. Beastly, I saw day. the best video like a week ago. It was a woman who was so fucking pissed off at Starbucks or something. I don't, I don't know exactly what store it was. That she pulls down her pants, shits on the floor, picks up the shit and flings it. No. At the people working behind the counter. No. <laughs> it's all wow. caught on video. It is kidding? amazing. <laughs> what, what, wow. What the fuck are you watching? That is bro? some primal That's ass not on Netflix, shit. man. That's, That's well high. described, wasn't it? <laughs> That's some primal rage shit. Very dude. primal. Somebody in that fucking game because That's some gorilla shit. Damn. So, like, it's, it's really easy for me. Um, 
every single relationship I've ever been into up until now, video games have pretty much been the deciding factor in <clears throat> us breaking up. Um, I love so it always starts out with, oh, that's cute. You play video games. That's awesome. Like you're home all the time. You're not out like partying, which was definitely not the case back then. I was doing both. But like, you know, they would always start out very in interested in or pretend to be. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what are you doing? Um, you know, I'm, I'm achievement hunting. You know, nothing too exciting here. Like I'm just getting achievements. Oh, well, you know, here, I'll get the player's guide and help you do it. You know what I mean? And then, you know, once, you know, the honeymoon phase is over and everyone gets comfortable it's you know you play too many video games and uh i had i had th this one girl lived at my lived with my best friend and his wife for a while so oh my god for our audio <laughs> listeners right now briar is eating a fruit roll up very How the fuck are you getting so fucking long very sensually that's fruit by the foot <laughs> that's fruit by the foot it is some good shit, man. I miss Oh, Rupa. my God. <laughs> Briar, I like earlier how when you ended your stream, you're like, okay, guys, I'm going to go get something to eat and we'll Here's be back for Revolver Live and motherfucker comes back with a fucking fruit, fruit roll up. <laughs> he was killing that roll up, too. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Wilson. I interrupted your story. It's no, really no, bad. it's all good. We see a guy do this with a long ass fucking fruit roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard not to react. I apologize. Eating it very sensually. I don't blame you. He um, was wearing that shit out. Yeah, yeah. So, this girl that I was dating lived with my best friend and her and his wife for a while. So, any time that he was playing video games with me, she would know about it when she wasn't there. So that, so that shit, time. that shit wasn't happening. And then that's the first time I figured out the hide offline function or whatever. So that, <laughs> smart man. yeah, and like it got to the point to where like no joke like she'd she'd turn his playstation on and look at the friends list and be like oh you know you said you had to go to your grandma's or help some old lady across the street you're playing fucking halo 3 you lying back ranked. yo i'm trying to get her rank up i'm helping the lady across the street get her rank up <laughs> I'm a hard more fucking carry street. up in here i'm helping her more than across the street i'm trying to get her to rank 50 all right like, <laughs> it's that's, easy that's you, shoddy you come spikes. over here and try and carry this burden yeah, right? That's, that's Woman's all fucking life. potatoes. <laughs> Game 50 and it's shoddy snipes. <laughs> it's funny though, right? Uh, that, that, that story, Wilson, kind of reminds me of uh, Kate's friend Taylor, who's about three years younger than Kate, but she's always been uh, adamantly against her boyfriend spending any extracurricular time playing video games because even back when she was 17, 18, 19, she was like, that is just what kids do. Uh, grown men shouldn't be playing it. And I've seen her go through relationship after bad relationship. And every time, you know, I met her, her boyfriend in Ohio a couple of years ago, the guy she's with now. And, uh, you know, I was talking to him about video games. He seemed really enthusiastic about it. And then she sat down and he got real quiet. And I was like, we're not going to talk about VR anymore. You know, he's like, oh, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about it later. No. And I was like, and then I looked at her over her and she's looking at me like, he's not going to do this. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Some people... Their happiness or what they want is more important than you being yourself. And I'm happy as fuck you met Sam. She's awesome. She's a gamer. And she's like the the, the hole to your key. I, I'll, yeah. Wait a minute. Wouldn't I be the key and she be the hole? You know what I'm saying? Wait, who's the key master and who's the <laughs> who's the lock? Wait, what? I said gatekeeper? she's the hole. Who's the, the gatekeeper? <laughs> Are you the gatekeeper? The key master? <laughs> I mean, just imagine though, Wilson, if you stuck around with someone who had an issue with that, or if you just, you know, like I said, played nice. I don't no, want to make this happen. chick angry. Like, I'm, uh, I'm happy you're a fucking man that, that, that stands for something. You pull your dick out, you smack the ground with it and say, this far, no further. Take your hand off my goddamn controller and get the fuck out of my apartment. That's right. Just, I don't call him just... Sweet Dick Willie for nothing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Like that. That's what I'm Did you just pull out like a phallic Gandalf? Like slap your dick down and say, "You shall not pass." Yes. That what you just did? Actually, actually, it was it was Captain Jean Luc Picard. But yeah, I'll take Gandalf. Right, you shall not pass. pass. Ooh. Everyone scatters. Uh, so I got a buddy who um, I'm not going to mention his name. <coughs> Confession, and um, he his girlfriend is oh my god she cracks me up like anytime she gets upset with him we get oh my god it's so much joy and i hate having joy at somebody else's expense but 
I told him, I was like, dude, just invite, get her a PlayStation, invite her into the party chat, and within five seconds, she will realize that nobody in this party is getting laid. We're all talking about <laughs> video game stuff. You know, we're talking about uh, spells and buffs and things to equip and anything other than real life at the moment. You know it what I mean? Sounds like I go, nerds in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nerds in it sounds like anything but sex, I promise. <laughs> like, it's it. It, uh, but she is always like, we only get him on Wednesday nights and he'll always be like, he'll always message me on Wednesday and be like, you're going to game with me tonight. And you know what I mean? And it's just, it's cool that he could put up with it because I couldn't, he's a stronger man than I am for it. You know, when you really love someone, no, but nobody can, you know, nobody sleeps with that person. It's really easy for everybody to kind of micromanage from outside. But, you know, he has that relationship with her. They, she's seen him at his worst and vice versa. So sometimes people sit around and take shit. But I'm happy you didn't. Is it just me, though? Side side quest of this topic. Mm. Are girls who play, not the not the streaming girls who pull their tits out and say, oops, my top. But I'm talking about um, actual regular chicks who play video games. Aren't they the fucking most amazing things on earth? Women who are who are deeply steeped into what would game. actually be amazing is a chick, like a chicken, a small chicken, playing video games. Now this, this would be amazing. Can you imagine? All right, you might need two of them, right? Let's, a controller. Yes. Yeah, we because I, I don't think that unless they really spread eagle, they could you hit. This year, this year. Yeah, well, we'd probably want to go to an NES controller because it's a little more simpler. Mm -hmm. They they could do the A and B buttons, one foot on each button for one chick, and the other chick controls the D-pad, right? Yeah, now we're talking. Not that Yobo piece of shit, a real NES. <laughs> <laughs> now, we get two chicks who could coordinate and play some Mario. How many, Mar how many chicks does it take to do... Finish <laughs> Mario. Give an unlimited one time stage. and unlimited chicks. How many right. chicks does it take? Four thousand years. Four thousand years. That's Interesting. Just I guess off the top, unlimited time and unlimited chicks. Uh, you know, one chick could just stand on the the D pad for. Do you a think minute. actually? Maybe I got this all wrong. Would they actually stand on it, or would they peck at it? It depends on if you put a trigger on the, on the if you put something that makes them look like makes it look like oh I should peck this. I'll throw if a little bird a, seed on there. Now now we're talking a different game. Now we could do some Dark Souls shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like Motherf if we you strategically place the, the oh that would be a new that's like, fucking esport. <laughs> that's like Killer Instinct combo shit right there. You could get a k -k 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 Killer combo. Killer combo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as soon as you know it's time, you see the enemy coming. You, you got a little funnel. You drop a seed. It lands, sticky pad right on each button. Bloop, sticks on the button. The bird goes over. You know. I don't know how long before it shits on it. Not long. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not long. How much? How much chick shit could a NES controller stand up to? Well, my, my sister things are Giselle, pretty. They're she, pretty durable. Yeah. Yeah, Nintendo yeah. controllers are. What's the? Yeah, uh, I've thrown quite a few. How much? Like I've never looked at, um, you know, chicks, chick shit, right? Is it very runny, like a like a bird, like a full grown bird, where it's like the white with a little bit of brown in it? I would I would probably surmise that it is runnier than uh, an adult bird. That's only from my uh, experience with my daughter. She has baby poop, and it's much runnier than adult poop, hmm. and and somehow it just goes everywhere, and she's completely fine. So. So That's we might we might need to bag up that NES controller because we don't know how dirty these chicks are. <laughs> or or oh just put like a, spray, a spray protector <laughs> over the top, a spray protector over the top that you could kind of just brush the, the the birdie the bird poop poopage off. But look, I want to talk to you more about this this idea, Brian, because I think it it could actually go places if we. Stream no, this I out. agree. I totally think this is a great it's, idea. But before we get back into the bird poop, I wanted to do this week's episode of Cisco Facts. Oh, okay. What do we got? All right. So this is a fact. <laughs> it's, it's going to be about Sorry. our friend Cisco. Okay. So I always wondered how he was so well versed in thongs and thong usage and thong mm. placement. Yes. He even go. He even says it in his song. He says uh, she had dumps like a truck, truck, truck. 
Mm. I was like, what, what, what? Mm-hmm. Baby, move your butt. But, but, they, they can sing it again. They sing it again. And so he repeated. So she had dumps like a truck, thighs like what? Mm. And then he said, baby, move your butt all night long. Let me see that thong. And I was wondering, you know, I'm a guy. I walk around and, you know, my woman wears a thong. You know, I only see it at nighttime. But, you know, during the day, it's really hard to see. And the reason that Cisco is so uh, well adept at seeing thongs is because, first of all, I'll give you a couple new facts. His new birthday, facts? So we're going to get a yes. couple of new facts? Couple. Yeah, like a Cisco his bonus birthday, episode. His birthday is <laughs> November 9th, 1978. Okay. His birth sign is And the reason he could see these thongs so well is because of his actual placement to the traditional woman's ass. Standing this year is his 40th foot, birthday. Five foot four. He is right in the vicinity of the, the average woman's ass. He has a much better perspective on seeing thongs than we do because of his height. And so I've always wondered, but being five foot four, kind of like uh, Harry Potter, same. I think f- Harry Potter's like five foot two. When you're that short, the thong is right in your face, and that's why he. That's a very eight. tall lady wearing that I've, thong. I've seen, him. I've seen him. I mean, because you got to figure the the thong is at the midpoint of the lady. So you're you're talking about like a ten foot eight lady. I don't know. I've seen some high waisted ladies. I've seen a woman who is. Five okay, foot let's say it's two thirds. You're still talking about like an eight foot lady. I think it was a birth defect, bro. A birth defect. Yeah. She Did was she five have foot, no torso? Five foot eleven. And it was just neck then hip. Foot. No, it, it went directly <laughs> from her waistline to her head. What else do you need? Nothing. Arms. Not arms? No. <laughs> yeah, are you telling me you wouldn't sleep with one of those fine ass girls from Silent Hill? You would have if they gave you enough alcohol and enough time. You think we can get Cisco on the show someday? <laughs> I hope so. Possible. <laughs> should we should we hit him up on Twitter? Yo, okay, everyone find Cisco, out. He legit loves video games. He tweet tweet Cisco fun. on Twitter. Hashtag revolver live. Yeah. Oh man, do it, guys! And let's we see could. if we can we can get Cisco. On I'd, sing, I'd Live. sing his songs. I'd sing them for everybody. I actually have a really nice singing voice. No we one know. Hears That's true. No, you don't. Yes, we do. That's we... my rapid voice. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. See, you're just not black enough. I feel I feel like I've heard your singing voice. I feel like we've sung together. We've done, really? Yeah, we've done a little bit of you know like pre-show. One of us will get a tune stuck in our head, and we'll start kind of humming along, and all of a sudden, busting out. Okay, You're a rich it, girl, and you don't yes, know. Don't too far, because you know it don't matter anyway. <laughs> you, can get, you can rely on your old man's money. You, you can, can rely, rely on the old, old man's old man money. money. <laughs> it's a bitch, girl. See? Yeah, man. I, I love singing. <laughs> it's, it's bad, though, when you're with someone, and, you, and your, your significant other is to it. Shy to sing, but like when you're when you're singing in the car and you're driving, and you look over and you see him tapping the window and mouthing the shit, but you can't hear it. Mm-hmm. Start fucking singing, Kate. Do you guys? God do you guys damn it, do that? Kate. Sing. Do you, do you sing guys loud do that and when proud, you're, Kate. Tell her again, bro. Oh my god, do it again. I felt a surge of energy when he said that. When you're in the car, do you guys? Do, when you pull up to a stoplight and people pull up next to you, do you? Do you keep jamming, singing, or do you? Yes, I do. Absolutely, I 100% do. I, like, you know I, what? At first, I'll look. I see that they're looking at me. I feel kind of embarrassed, and then yeah. I like double my effort. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say. Sometimes I'll like I'll look over at them and start doing it, and you get some hilarious reactions. Like people yeah. love it, man. I've never had a negative reaction to someone busting me out singing no. in the car. Well, what um. I do, like, because my boys are at the age now, I pick up them from their mother's house, which won't be happening for a while because it's the summertime. Fuck, gotta go buy some food. Um. But I'll pick them up from their mother's house, and it's you know it's uh, mostly uh, black neighborhood. Their mom lives in nice neighborhood, but it's mostly black, ninety nine percent. And you know, so you know, in the black community, you got to walk with you know walk with a kind of a pimp walk. Everybody looks like they just escaped from jail. Like nobody's like, hey, how you doing? Everybody's upset. You know, walking to the bus stop, I will roll all my windows down and start singing some Yutada Hikaru, this Japanese singer, and I'll sing it in her voice loudly. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know my son, I'll see his seat kind of recline. You know, I you know I don't give a fuck. Uh, and and you know I've seen people kind of look like, what are you singing? And then when they get close, the car will pull up next to you, and you, Chloe, don't you dare! 
funny once again. And I'm actually saying this shit, and they're like, holy shit, this dude's fucking crazy. That's hilarious. If I had kids, I would be all about embarrassing them in the car. By oh, it's that's traffic. good stuff. Oh, yeah. That's that <laughs> right, is you the know Jeep, the Wilson. I had the Jeep with the doors and the top off. That was prime. <laughs> what did you do, Brian? I'm going to no, have to be do that screaming next... lyrics to the song at the top of my lungs at a stoplight. And my kids just be like. That's amazing. That's what, yeah. yeah. <laughs> keep it real, man. Keep it real. Yeah, can we get the windows limo tinted? Like, <laughs> so they can hide in the back. There are no windows. I took them <laughs> off. <Nope. laughs> there are no windows. You know, I mean, real talk. A couple of months ago, my sons, uh, they were fucking up at school. And they know I don't like that shit. Bro, it's really hard to spank a 17-year-old. Especially when their hairs, their legs are hairier than yours. And then you're sitting looking at the leg. And you're like, how did you get that? <laughs> anyway, what you do when your kids are fucking up, you take their bath, their uh, bedroom door off the hinge. I don't know why. Oh, and my you just take the door that. completely off. Mm-hmm. right? Leaving them completely exposed. Yeah, because they can't now, jerk off anymore, Beasley. That's oh, it's the ultimate my, punishment. My oldest man, he wakes up, everybody's <laughs> asleep, and he'll go in the bathroom for an hour. And mm-hmm. the reason you know he's doing something unseemly is because he neatly rolls a towel and lays it at the foot at the bottom of the door. Yeah, because like, nobody's in the bathroom for an hour. That's why yeah, like, you know. Tell, tell you him know again. what his you're doing. Is, his name is Brett Breyer. He's watching right now. I know what tell you're doing, Brett. Brett. I know what yeah. you're doing, and that's okay, man. Go at it. It's fine. Okay. You're, you're okay. Just wash your hands. My dad sure used to do that shit all the time, dude. He'd take the fucking door off the hinges, and I wouldn't be able to, like, hang out my window and sneak a toad. You know what <laughs> I mean? Your dad knew what the fuck he is. The- yeah, but what? I knew what's up. He's like, I'm going to hang out your window and smoke weed, so I'll take the door off, and then anytime I see you hanging out the window, I'll, I'll catch your ass. You know what I mean? So, that oh, that used to piss me off, dude. I hated that. You're, you're right, BC. That is, like, that is it. Take the door off the hinges, and they will. It only will, took me seventeen years to figure that they, out. They will mow the lawn. They will do the dishes. They will. <laughs> I went to, do, I went to I lunch know. with my mother uh, last weekend, and we were having a conversation about how when I, she used to ground me, and she'd take the tires from my bicycle and throw them in the trunk and bring them to the car so I could get out. And then, uh, so I, I jumped know. on the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> drive the lawnmower to my friend's house. <laughs> Straight up, I did the same shit. So dude. Gangster, I would, bro. I would drive the lawnmower, and it was like, dude, my friends lived very far away, dude. It was legit, like a fifteen to twenty-five minute lawnmower ride to my friends. Like, <laughs> That's a long ride on a mower, insane. man. We well, pop it in neutral. If like I lived in a very hilly like area That's neighborhood, smart. pop it in neutral. You could roll that bitch down, and you, you get know, a little extra was, speed, and you save a little gas. And and you save a little bit of gas, and you look cool as shit too, because you're flying mm. on that thing, dude. <laughs> eh, you're right. I thought I looked cool, man. When I, yeah, when yeah. I got that thing up to eighty-eight point eight miles an hour, whoo! Let me tell you, there's no point in your whole life where you think you look cooler. Like you, the dichotomy between how cool you think you look and how terrible you actually look is when you're playing VR. <laughs> man, you get in. To some super hot, and you feel like the most badass motherfucker oh, yeah, so who right. ever lived. Everybody watching you is laughing their asses off. You look so clumsy. You look you're like it is. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're shooting up in the air and like it's. It's, VR is it's amazing. amazing. I, I'm so I glad. I want to play super hot, super hot again, but I need to get into that star, that Star Trek uh, bridge crew. Yes. I am very excited that I'm going to be starting my second job next month, and I'm going to have a lot more disposable cash. And my first thing I'm planning on getting is that damn VR. I'm so. not touching that game until I play it with you two guys. And then I'll, exactly. I'll go in and we'll do it nice and fresh, and we'll have a good time doing it. I've right. been looking forward to that. Since Beastly, I think he told me about it when we were doing Beastly Thoughts years ago. I've been looking forward to that. But yeah. I, I want to do it with my buddies. I want to be the bridge crew. I want to take it way too seriously and have probably too many beers doing it. I'm definitely getting coffee beer special for this. Yeah. Because right. I got to tell you, wait, you know, I don't the drink, new so gospel watch you coffee decline. beer. <laughs> it's going to be the greatest thing ever. Dude, it's quick too, obviously. I am a complete lightweight when it comes to alcohol. Oh, I trust Two you, beers I deep and I'm like... <laughs> Same. I am a cheap date. Cheap date when it comes to alcohol. We had at the festival, I had I was drinking... Uh, bottles of champagne on the last night and i was drunk off one bottle of champagne mm. like oh, just well, 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 one well, bottle of champagne that'll yeah sweet dick, sweet dick willie when you uh drink when you don't drink 
and then you do drink a bottle of wine, like I haven't had anything to drink in five months. If I was to drink like a bottle of just regular wine, I would. Oh, be- it wasn't wine; it was champagne. So oh. it's a little less alcohol than wine. You know, I what think I mean? I'd be but, fucked on that right now. But know? it was good. <clears throat> just classy, you know what I'm saying? Just drinking yeah. right out of the bottle. It was. Super You're a classier classy. drunk, I believe, too, when you drink champagne. Yeah, yeah There's absolutely. There's an elegance Everyone. to that. Your 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 drunkenness. Your, yeah. Yes. I, I, do you wear a tuxedo? No, but I had that fur coat on that you saw. Nice. That, so <laughs> that was good. So I had like my my like Macklemore moment with my fur coat. It felt <laughs> so good. When, when she, I have my, I have an actual fur coat in my. Um, closet and I haven't worn it since 2010. I used to wear it when Kate met me. She said she thought I was like some undercover rapper. Thought I had a whole bunch of money. She told me she thought I was a gangster until she started talking to me and it all went out the window. And then she found no. out she was right. Mm. And then she, <laughs> then she knew he was a gangster. Yo, speaking of Macklemore, should we announce our little thing? Yes. Right yeah, uh, you know, since we brought June up Macklemore 10th. Thrift Shop, we got a revolver oh. challenge that the three of us are going to be partaking. Um, I have dubbed it the revolver thrift shop challenge. Now we revised it a little bit. It was just going to be that the three hosts <clears throat> go to a yard sale, a flea market, or a thrift store with a twenty dollar limit and buy the coolest item that we could think of. Um, I say we turn it over to chat. And let them decide who wins, maybe, or maybe put a poll I out think on this Twitter. Is a good idea. I think we'll do a we'll do a chat poll. Uh, we'll, do the a, day. we'll do a straw poll. <clears throat> I'll I'll research how to make one because I'm a total pleb when it comes to being a mod. <laughs> anyway, uh, so basically, we're gonna go to garage sales. We decided to not do thrift stores or any kind garage of garage sales, building. yard sales, estate sales, things of that nature. Get out into the world and meet people and and, and haggle them and say, hey, look, I see you got that. That little video game over there, I don't think anyone's going to buy it. Will you take a quarter? Start low. Look. Yeah, exactly. Like, so and basically, they we're going to go out, you- we're going to get a video game item with a $20 limit. That's right. And Not just one to- item, but buy as many as you can, but $20. So, yeah, well, like if you get a whole lot, you know what I mean? If you're like, I'll give you 20 bucks for the system and the lot, you know, that that's a $20 purchase. We're then going to let chat decide on who wins. Now, we're not going to do it this Sunday because, to play fair, some of us can't get out to a yard sale this week. So we're going to wait until next Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) Too much work. Too much work. Man is overworked right now. So uh, basically, we're going to wait till next Sunday, and we'll bring our stuff on air, and we will let chat decide who the winner is. That'll be the, the yard sale episode. And I'm super excited about it. Yo, I got I, an idea. What if we do like a secret Santa with it too? Ah, oh, so we don't yeah. get to. We're not keeping the stuff we get. It's only twenty dollars for the stuff, so it's not that yeah. much money, right? right? What if we decide? Well, yeah, well, maybe we kind of just pull straw or something the night of, and then we send our kind of like our loot haul to somebody else on the on the on the crew. I did it. So it'll be kind of like a you don't even know who you're buying for when you're buying it, and then we'll we'll draw like numbers to yeah, see that who, way who we, you send everybody it. Everybody doesn't send I'm all down. the shit to me. Okay. Wouldn't that be I'm fun? Down. Yeah, that sounds if good. I, if I buy Chrono Trigger for twenty bucks, I'm sorry, uh, I'm keeping. It. <laughs> <laughs> if I get Chrono Trigger for twenty bucks, I'm sorry, I'm sending your ass NBA Jam. All right, <laughs> <laughs> five dollars. But I think that it'll be fun. It it'll be fun. Our... You can't use the internet. You can't use. Yes. No. You eBay. can't use the internet. You can't. You you can't like use a, like a used video game store. Nope. It's got to be like a wheeling and dealing kind of thing. Got to hit yeah. the streets. Got to hit the streets. It's got to be tag yep. sales. It's got to be. Yep. Flea uh, market. Yeah, flea market. That kind of thing. Yep. So yeah, no brick and mortar. Haggle, haggle, haggle. Twenty dollar limit, and we will see who the victor is. Spoiler yeah. alert. It's gonna be me. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know where I live, right? You know, there's there's mm-hmm. a a politician and a crackhead within one block of my house. You know, it's crackheads it's place... don't count either, Beastly. I know what kind of deals you can get from crackheads. All right, the, oh, they will shit. give you know, that shit tell away. By the coat. Crackheads <laughs> don't count. All right. <laughs> hey, man, you need some, some kitchen cutlery. He's or how about be... an Xbox One X? Yeah. yeah, I bought an entire home for twenty dollars from this crackhead. Like no big deal. <laughs> you should see the carpets. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's cigarette burns. 
<laughs> yeah, and you, you know what? Feel free, uh, chat, if you guys want to play along with us. Like I said, it's not this Sunday, next Sunday. Um, take pictures, tweet Ooh. them to us. Let us know what your guys' pickups are. Oh, like, yeah, do that. Guys. That's a good so, idea. Yeah. Let's and, get and chat, and we'll pick a winner for chat, too. So, chat will <sighs> pick a winner for us, and then we'll pick a winner for chat. Send us pictures. Don't cheat. Send a picture. Don't go into your, your brother's room and take pictures of his hall. Get your own stuff. <laughs> Damn, you already built shelving for it and everything. Wow. Yes, <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun. And, and if you guys like what we did today with the uh, viewer cues or viewer topics, send yours to revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We're going to do this much more often. We really enjoy including you guys into Revolver and, and talking about the topics that are important to you. So if, if you have something in your mind, you're talking to a friend about a video game or anything. It doesn't have to be video games. It could be... I don't know why my penis is so big. Send it to revolvergamescast at gmail.com, and we'll we'll discuss it for you. Some of us know what that's like. Once we compile enough of them, Not me. you know, we might even be able to make a <laughs> show. <me>. So. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys made any great purchases, like, in the last seven days? This is one of them. I saw Briar looking like, what is that? Is that yeah, why do you keep turning that fucking electric razor around during the show? You know how fucking loud that is on your microphone? This isn't a razor. <laughs> What is it? I'll take your word for it, but you don't need to turn it on to prove it. Yes. This, <laughs> I agree with this, Wilson. <laughs> this is a corn remover. A what it's now? A grinder. It's a corn remover for your feet. The only foot that's been used is mine. Nose. Just now we just smelled it. Oh my God, beastly. Hey, hey, let me just say this, okay? I love myself. You don't have to. The only foot this thing has touched it's mine, goddamn. Okay, fair I, enough. I, I, it's my own feet foot, don't stink. Whatever. Firstly, secondly, I have beautiful toes. I'm a Pisces. I take care of my fucking feet. If you, if I we love were... letting women massage my feet. I didn't know that was a Pisces thing. Yeah, it either. is. Look it up. It's called astrology and I science. Really know if I can uh, say legally what my best purchase has been after I went to the festival. So you won't like it, gonna... Beasley. You won't like it. <laughs> do it. Uh, you won't do it. My God. Oh my God. He's gonna. Oh he my god, it. he's forever he unclean. <laughs> F's in chat. F's in chat. Oh my god. Listen, so, man, yeah. I've, I've lit some things that are a lot, what well, well, some would say, a lot worse than a corn remover. It's brand fucking new, and I only used it once. And, and my feet look like they were just born in size 15. I bet they do. Your, your feet are size 15? Yeah. Do you have to like go to a special store to buy shit? Shoes? Yeah, they gotta get them online. My brother was a seventeen. Seventeen? Yeah. That's like Shaquille O'Neal. That's like a gallon of milk inside that shoe. I think Shaquille wears twenty ones. Well, I've pretty seen damn his close shoes. Piece. They're big. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I have really big feet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have big feet. Yo, Inner Black Ninja says your next your, your, toothbrush. your next purchase should be a good toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I love myself. Now, I wouldn't do it to my toilet paper, okay? But I, I've always loved my feet. I've always taken good care of them. I've been very proud of them, besides my pinky toenail, which looks like someone grew a booger and just threw it on my foot. Thanks, Dad. But the rest of my toes are totally beautiful. And I was in jail 20 years ago, and I was shocked because you get, you know, when you go to jail, for, for minor infractions. They take away your shoes, they take away your outfit, and they give you a fucking jailhouse getup and some, some sandals. And when I was Flip walking locks. around in there... Bro, don't hate on sandals. I'm all yeah. about sandals. Yo, if you ain't they're, flipping, they, you're not living, man. Listen, there are flip-flops in jail. And it's, <laughs> and it's, it's cold in jail. Okay? <laughs> and so I'm in jail in a cell with like 25 right. guys... I don't know if these dudes murdered somebody. You know, I'm in here for a minor infraction. I can't remember. We flopping, we ain't stopping. <laughs> but I look down, and like 90% of the guys in there, all their toenails are brown. I was like, I'm looking, and you know, in my, my young mind, I'm like, how did I avoid this? Everybody has fucking fungus feet. If I stay in here, will I contract this disease? Will, yes, I, turn into a, will I turn into a clicker? So, I mean, I didn't clicker. know what was going on. <laughs> You know, everybody had fucked up toes, and since that day in jail, I've come out and I told everyone I love my feet. They're so beautiful because I was the only big black guy with apparently. Did white... you just get scared straight because of foot fungus in jail? Is that your story? <laughs> I said, I'm in jail, I swear to God. Not the, 
not the fact that maybe someday you could be wrongfully incarcerated, you know, for your skin color or anything like that. You're just worried about foot fungus. That's what's Never crossed my mind. <laughs> you know, out of sight, out of mind. All I saw, but I saw the feet, so it stuck in my mind. <laughs> That's oh, hilarious. My I don't even know where to go from that. I'm scared straight by foot fungus. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, it works. It works. You've seen those shows? They get up in the kid's face. Could you imagine? That? You want to get foot fungus? Like <laughs> it's all up in the kid's face. Like, <laughs> look at this. You know, look at these toenails. <laughs> <laughs> look at these flip flops. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it takes months of medication to get rid of that. <laughs> months. <laughs> so, uh, you, you ever know, seen an ingrown toenail? <laughs> yeah, you ever seen, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll just show my kids pictures of jailhouse feet. They'll keep them out of jail. They'll, they'll stay on the right side of the law. Yo, I'm Here's hungry. What do you say we wrap this up and go get some dinner? Let's do it. Yeah, Let's especially after all that foot fungus talk. I'm hungry. Mm, fuck it, start. Yeah, well, I could go for like some. Uh, here and eat, you know? you know, maybe some <laughs> mozzarella cheese sticks, or I don't know, buffalo wings, or. Uh... Ooh, you're doing no carb. <laughs> That's I'm having not no some carb. Hibachi grill. Mozzarella steak cheese sticks are tonight. not no well, carb. I, last <laughs> night I did some uh, collard greens with some uh, smoked turkey in them. Of mm. course, perfectly seasoned. And I did cake myself um, some beef back ribs. And mm. that was fucking amazing. And oh, then yeah. she made some uh, burger patties with some bell peppers and banana peppers in them for the kids last night. I took two of those to work today with some greens. And I guess I'm gonna go out there and see what she made tonight. Yeah, that sounds maybe fire. some corn. Some what? Corn. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks no, for watching, on that, huh? <laughs> All right, bye guys. Thank you for stopping by. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>